Hey, what is going on everybody? This is Tony 2.0. The calendars have turned to one. The last year is gone and we are on into 2015. What that means is it's time to discuss our games of the year. Given the industry's propensity to put out horribly playing games last year, it's uh, shocking how many games I actually had in my contention for game of the year. And when it was all said and done, uh, this was a tough decision. And I can only tell you guys that my results were solely based off of the games that I played. I didn't get to play everything, but I tried to touch on most of the main contenders. First thing I want to do is let's get the honorable mentions out of the way. The first game that I wanted to discuss was Insurgency. This game came out in January, first of the year, and that's usually a killer as far as what you're going to get from game of the year content contention. People just don't have the attention spans anymore uh, and, and unless you're doing something on a monthly or, or quarterly basis it's really not going to uh, not gonna bode well for you. However, Ins Insurgency turned out to be one of those games that I just simply couldn't I couldn't forget about. Uh, I don't play it enough and every time I turn to it they seem to have made little tweaks and graphical adjustments and additions to the game that make this little FPS a really fun playing experience. The next one on our list, Shadows of Mordor, uh, Middle Earth Shadows of Mordor. This game came in as a late entrant, which is usually pretty good for award ceremonies uh, go. This game kind of came out of nowhere. There wasn't a whole lot of hype for it. There was basically no advertising coming around. Uh, I really didn't know about the game until, well, it came out. Monolith did an absolutely amazing job with this game. And to be honest, for about a week or so, this was going to be my game of the year. However, a couple other games just grabbed me a little bit more, and it's based on my personal opinion that Although this game is well worth playing, Shadows of Mordor just wasn't in the top as far as where I was going to go with Game of the Year. The other honorable mention for me, uh, South Park, Stick of Truth. What can you say about Trey Stone and Matt Parker in this franchise? They tend to do anything they touch turns into gold. And this little RPG, this game, was, was nothing different. It was an absolutely grabbing, great playing, awesome story, the characters you know and love, there was not a whole lot wrong with the game. Unfortunately, just not enough flash and not enough pizzazz for me, and uh, it didn't make the final cut. That's going to put us down to our final two. The two games that, to me, <clears throat> it, it was tough to, uh, really tough to make this decision. The game that came in as my runner-up was Far Cry 4. I picked this game up about 10 days before the end of the year, and it really wasn't on my radar. I hadn't heard a lot of things great, I hadn't heard a lot of things terrible, but it's Far Cry, and Far Cry is generally good. Unfortunately, Far Cry is produced by Ubisoft, and that doesn't usually go well. Far Cry 4 brings you into this immense RPG world. I don't know if you can call it an RPG. There's there's just so many genres that it kind of fits into. It is an expansive, deep, story-driven game that keeps you coming back for more. And for me, since I've had it, I, I just can't put it down. It's a fantastic game, and it came, I mean, it came within centimeters of taking my game of the year. Far Cry 4 is the story of AJ Gale. He is trying to free his people of Karat uh, as a freedom fighter for an, an evil dictator and the story that this takes you on is fantastic throw in the incredible graphics the endless amount of things that you can do after the main storyline is done and Far Cry 4 has been one of the better playing experiences for me I have heard that there has been quite a few bugs for people I have not run into those. Uh, the only issues that I've had is little visual glitches, kind of holes, and just weird little visual things. It's, it's been nothing that's game breaking, nothing that has stopped me from playing the game. And so for me, this game came in at number two. 
that may be weird when you hear what game of mine won game of the year in my opinion but for me the game that I chose is is a game that is so well made so much thought went into every little aspect of it and upgrading it that it's a completely different experience than what you may think of when you think of big AAA titles. My game of the year was The Binding of Isaac Rebirth. This game, from the moment I started playing it, it just screams, continue to play me, continue to play me. I have put in like 60 hours in the game. I still have not got all of the different items, I haven't unlocked everything, and I still play it almost daily. The Binding of Isaac, its original format, was uh, it was an awesome game. Unfortunately, it was built, it was a flash game, and it ran like crap, and all of the items weren't, they didn't work together uh, with each other. And they took all of those lessons and all of the feedback from the community and put out a fantastic new rendition. HD textures, 60 frames a second, they made all of the items work together and be harmonious. The game is just, it's great. It's an awesome play. And with the additions of things like saving your current run so that you can kind of break off and get out of it, it's, I mean, it's, it's as close to a perfect game as there is. For what the game is, a simple little dungeon trolling platforming thingy, it is, it's amazing. It was absolutely the best purchase I ever made, and I didn't even purchase it. I had a good buddy of mine gift me the game, and I am very happy that he did. I knew from all the reports that the game was going to be very solid. I did not know it was going to be as solid as it ended up being. And when you look at a $60 game like Far Cry 4 or Shadows of Mordor, and then you look at this little $15 Binding of Isaac Rebirth, as far as enjoyment in my gaming experience, bang for your buck performance and expectations being met, Binding of Isaac Rebirth hit all of those right points. And for me, there was just nothing, even as much fun as I'm having with Far Cry 4, there's nothing that, that gets me to that point, that makes me feel that way. Guys, I want to know what you think. I understand that this is a little bit unconventional. I did not get to play some of those games that uh, others may have thought. I did play. Um, <laughs> I did play Call of Duty: Advanced Warfare, and that's not even that. That's probably not even in the conversation ever any year. But uh, guys, please leave your comments down below if you've played any of those games. What do you think? Where do you think I went wrong? Again, this is just my opinion. Obviously, uh. I can't I can't appease everyone but for me Binding of Isaac Rebirth well worth your money it's my game of the year guys go and check it out check out the videos on the channel uh, once you start playing it and learn the little nuances of it it's just it's the best game and uh, I highly recommend it for everyone guys my name is Tony 2.0 thanks for checking out this video please leave those comments down below like if you like it subscribe if you are not already and I'll be back again very soon, guys.